Hey everyone, in this video I want to cover two features called pipes and redirections. Now before we cover those we need to understand three data streams that are created when we launch a command. So each command or process has a standard input, standard output, and standard error. Now what those three do are pretty self-explanatory um, just based off of their name. So standard input is the input to the command, so you know like a command line argument or anything like that. Uh, standard output is the output of the command, and standard error is the um, error um, of a specific command. So if you tried to uh, open up a file that doesn't exist or, or read a file that doesn't exist, it's going to spit out an error, and that's considered standard error. Uh, that's the standard error data stream. So when it comes to standard input, um, the input can come from anywhere. It can come from the shell, and when I say that, that's like uh, me typing in something. So that would be the input to a command. So if I did, you know, ls and then slash var slash log, that the input would be slash var slash log. Um, the input though can come from other places. Instead of just coming from the shell input, the input can also come from a file or someplace uh, from uh, off the network. It can really come from anywhere. It doesn't just have to come from us entering it into the command line. And the standard output um, is basically just the text output of the command. So if we run this command, you can think of this output as the standard output. And by default, standard output is designed to send um, is designed to be sent out to the shell so that we can see it on the command line. But once again, just like standard input, it doesn't necessarily have to do that. We could technically send the standard output to another file, another device. Um, we could send it anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to just go to the shell. And the error messages, uh, you know, by default, it's going to be printed out in the shell just like standard output, but it doesn't have to be. So if I do cat and then, you know, some random file that doesn't exist, it's going to spit out an error on the shell. But we can actually send it to a file or we can send it someplace remotely just like we do with the standard out. So each of these three streams has a number associated with them. Um, standard in has a, a value of zero that's associated with it. Standard out has a value of one associated with it. And standard error has a value of two associated with it. And we can use those values to retrieve each of those specific values. So as an example, I can use the echo command. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, you just type in echo and then what you want to type, so just some random text. I'll just say some random text. And all it's going to do is just print out what we just typed. So the input to the echo command is this string, and the output is it printing it out to the shell, some random text. Now, as I stated before, the output or the standard out doesn't necessarily have to go to the shell. We can actually redirect it to someplace else, like a file. So to redirect the standard output to a file, we just type in the command that we want, and we'll just type in the same exact thing. And then we do um, a one. So if you remember, zero stands for standard in, uh, one stands for standard out, and two stands for standard error. So we give the specific number that we want, which is standard out. Then we do the greater than sign, which is the redirect symbol, and then the file name. So we'll call this, um, you know, random file. And notice how after we run this command this time, it doesn't spit out anything. And that's because the output or the standard out is getting redirected to random file. And if we cat that file, you can see the contents of the standard out get sent to the file instead of going to the shell. Now, just to let you guys know, by default, it's going to assume that we want to redirect the standard out. So you don't actually have to put in a value if you want to send the standard out uh, to a file. So if you just delete the one, it's going to assume that you're referencing the standard output. All right. Now, let's say we run a command that throws an error. And an easy way to do that is just to call um, a file that doesn't exist. So it's going to look for that file, and it spits out an error. So this is the standard error of that command that we just ran. Now, once again, just like standard output, we can redirect that to a uh, specific file. So we can say um, cat, ASDF, ASDF. Uh, then we do 
greater than sign, but instead of doing a one, we do a two because the number two references standard error. And then we can send this to random error file. Now when that runs, you can see that um, nothing gets printed out to the shell and that's because it all got sent to that file. Now I created a script ahead of time called script.sh and if we look at the contents of that script, you're going to see that it's a pretty simple script. All it does is it runs the echo command and then it will try to cat a file that doesn't exist. So this script should um, provide some standard out, which is going to be this string printed out and it should also have some standard error uh, and that's going to be uh, due to this command. So if I run that script real quick, um, you can see the standard output is this line and the standard error is this line. Now let's use the tools that we just learned to redirect the output and or the errors to other files. So if we do dot slash script dot sh and redirect it and we'll say we want to send the standard out to my script output you can see that only the error gets printed on the shell and the standard out gets sent to that file that I just created. Now if we wanted to redirect just the error we can change that to a 2 and we'll just call this my script error. And so now once we do that, the standard out gets printed to the screen, um, but the standard error gets sent to this file. Now let's say we want to send both the error and the standard out to two separate files. We can do hot slash script.sh we send the standard out to, um, we'll just send it to the same file script output. And we can send the standard error to that same error file. Now remember, when it comes to redirecting output, by default it's going to be a one, so we don't actually need that. So when we run this, nothing gets sent to the terminal because both the standard out and standard error get redirected to their respective files. and you're going to see the contents are going to be exactly the same. My script output, so this is the standard out, and then the standard error should show us the error. Now let's say we wanted to send both the error and the standard out to the same exact file. We can do that as well. So the syntax for that is going to be this. Um, we're going to redirect, and we're going to redirect it to, let's just call this combined file. And then we do a two greater than and one. So we're going to take the output of this standard error and standard out. We're going to send it to this combined file. So this is the format that you're going to use to do that. And when you run that, if we check the contents of combined file, you can see that both the output and the error get sent to that file. Now, there's one thing I want to point out with the the redirect uh, symbol here. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick example. So let's say I do echo, and then let's just say my first echo, and redirect it. So I'm going to send the standard out. And remember, that's a, it defaults to the number one, so we don't need to put that in there. And we'll call this um, example.txt. So if we cat example.txt, um, it's going to be my first echo. Now if I run this command again, but change this to my second echo, and I point it to uh, the same file, so this is pointing to a file that already exists, let's see what happens. So now if we cat this, you can see that it only has the new echo that we sent it, and it seemed to overwrite the first one. So that's the default behavior of this redirect. If the file doesn't exist, it'll create the file and then redirect whatever output to that file. But if the file already exists, it will overwrite it and then redirect the standard output to that file. So it basically wipes that file clean and then sends whatever output it wants to to that file. 
Now, that may not be the behavior that you want. Actually, usually it's not going to be the behavior that you want. What you want is for, uh, let's say, we send a certain output to a file. If the file doesn't exist, then obviously we want to create it and then copy the output to that file. But if the file does exist, um, we want to just append to the bottom of the file. So keep all the contents of the file, just append it to the bottom. And to do that, I'm going to just run my first echo and I'm going to call this example 2.txt. So we're going to do the same thing. Actually, sorry. Um, so the way to do what I just mentioned is doing echo my first echo and then we do two greater than signs and we'll just call this uh, we'll call this my random test file. So now this is a new file that doesn't exist. So if we do this uh, with two greater than signs, it should create that file and append the output to it. And as we can see, it, it did do that. Now, if we run it again, but change this to my second echo, if we cat the contents of the file, you can see that because this file already existed, it will send the, it'll append this output to the bottom of the file. So it keeps the original contents and just appends it to the bottom of that file. Um, so that's the difference between having a single greater than sign versus having two greater than signs. One will overwrite an existing file. This one will um, append to the bottom of that file. Now, the final thing I want to show you guys is the pipe command. And the pipe command is a very, very valuable tool um, as it allows us to take the output of one command and send it into another command. So the way that works is, let's say, um, I'm gonna go to the slash bin folder because I know there's a lot of um, a lot of files in there. And let's say I didn't want to just have to scroll through it. Um, if you remember, we have the command more right, that'll allow us to just space through the output. So what we can do is we can do ls minus l, and we want to send the output not, not directly to the shell, but to another command. So we can type in pipe, and then we send it to the more command. So now this is going to allow us to more through the file. And we can also send it to the less command, and we can pipe through that. What we can also do is um, there's a few other uh, I guess special commands that you guys should definitely learn, um, and that would be grep, which basically looks for lines that match a certain string. So if I wanted to find the a file named VDIR, it's going to look for all, across all the lines for a file named VDIR. So what that did was it took all the contents of this output and would send it to the grep command, which then returns any any line with the word VDIR. And I'm just showing you this ex with the um, I'm just showing you this with the ls command as an example, but you can do this with any command. So if you um, if we cat it a file, let's say sudo cat zless and then pipe grep the letter a or something, it's going to print out all the lines in that file with the letter a. And you know one more command I wanted to show you that we can use with pipe a lot is wc minus l, which which counts the total number of lines. So here it says that when we do ls minus l to print out all the files, um, there's a total of 163 lines, which means there's 163 total files. But the great part about this pipe command is we can keep piping and sending it to different commands. So a common use case of that is we grep for something, let's just say VDIR again, or let's just grep for the letter A. And then we pipe the output of that to WC minus L. So what this is gonna do is, this is gonna list all the files, sends that output to grep, which is gonna grep um, and find all the lines with the letter A, and then it's gonna take that and send it to WC minus L, which is going to count um, the the number of lines that it, got, that it got passed into that command. So this ultimately is gonna count the number of lines from ls minus l that has the letter a and you can see it's 89 all right so that's all i wanted to show you guys um so definitely take advantage of using redirects as well as um the pipe command uh they're both great tools to use in your linux arsenal